All right, in this next video, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, more about replication. Uh, and we're going to start by talking about where does the energy for replication come from. So as we know from earlier studies, most energy comes from ATP. And that's where most energy for most bonding comes from. And ATP is a modified nucleotide. Breaks down into ADP, releases energy, and energy is used to, by cells to do work. But are there other ways to get ATP? Sure. We could break ATP down into AMP. Energy is released there. So these modified nucleotides, like ATP, adenosine triphosphate, they come with energy. And what you're left with is a nucleotide, in this case, adenine. So are there other energy nucleotides? Sure there are. Besides, we got GTP, which breaks down into guanine. TTP, which breaks down into thymine, and CTP, which breaks down into cytosine. So when the nucleotides come into the replication bubble, the side of replication, they are nucleosides. They're the DNA base with three phosphates added. Those phosphates have energy, and when we remove the phosphates, that provides the energy to bond the nucleotides together. Uh, the enzyme that controls this is DNA polymerase 3. So here's the three nucleus or the four nucleosides that come in and what we're left with is a DNA molecule. So remember the enzyme DNA polymerase 3 can only work from the three prime end of a growing strand. So therefore it needs a starter. It needs a primer. So there's another enzyme that does that. So here you can see we've got the we've already got a strand started. So DNA polymerase can come in, bring in the adenine triphosphate, adenosine triphosphate, excuse me. Remove the last two phosphates. Energy is given off. The bond is formed, and it continues on down the molecule building until you get a completed copy of the DNA molecule. So again, you see it works five prime to three prime as it builds. So again, we start with a double-stranded DNA molecule. DNA ligase comes in and splits the molecule in, by breaking the hydrogen bonds. And then we've got one molecule that's three prime to five prime. But the other one is anti-parallel to it, so it's five prime to three prime. So the, the first strand here on the right all you need is a primer. RNA primase adds the primer, and then our DNA polymerase can come in and, and build the new molecule. On this side, though, we've got a primer. But if you look, there's a problem here if you try to build it this way. There's nothing to form that bond there. No, so there's no energy for that bond. The energy is down below. So instead it has to work the opposite direction. So it jumps ahead and builds back. So it creates a bunch of small fragments that eventually are going to have to be joined together called Okasaki fragments. So the two strands of DNA that act as templates, one is a leading strand, it has continuous re replication, and one is the lagging strand, it has discontinuous replication where it jumps ahead, works back, jumps ahead, works back, and creates the Okasaki fragments that have to be joined together by ligase. So here you can see, here's the enzyme, works 5' prime to 3' prime just fine, makes a continuous strand, and it's all good. On this side, we got the wrong direction. 
So it has to create these Okasaki fragments, which will have to be joined later by ligase. So all this happens in an area called the replication bubble. And within a DNA molecule, there's going to be several replication bubbles working on the same piece of DNA to speed up the process. So it spreads both directions, as you can see. You have leading strands and lagging strands, continuous and discontinuous replication until the whole molecule gets copied. But again, we've mentioned a couple times now that DNA polymerase can only build onto a three prime end of an existing DNA strand. So you've got to start the strand somehow, and that's where primase comes in. It primes the process by adding a nucleotide on and getting the process started. Now that nucleotide is an RNA nucleotide. We'll talk about more about that later. Eventually it's going to get replaced by DNA by a molecule called DNA polymerase 1. So replacing the primers, DNA polymerase 1 is going to come in, read the DNA, the, the RNA, cut it out, and replace it with the correct DNA bases so that we have a complete strand of DNA made from both the leading and the lagging strand. So on the leading strand, that primer is just cut off. It's not replaced. In the Okazaki fragments, it is. So what happens is that every time the DNA is copied, it gets a little bit shorter. So we have to have something added on to the end of our chromosome so that we can lose those bits of chromosome each time the DNA is copied. Those, those ends that can be lost are called telomeres, and they're made by an enzyme called telomerase. So basically, it protects the ends, and each time DNA is replicated, a little bit of it is lost. So about 50 cell divisions is about all the copies of DNA a cell can make. So once the cell has used up its copies, it can no longer divide. So it's either going to just live out its life and eventually wear out and, and get replaced, or it may go through apoptosis where it commits cell suicide, basically, so it doesn't start losing coding bits of DNA. So the black represents the telomere there. So the, the area in the bubble that's opening up where replication is occurring is called the replication fork. And remember, helicase is working ahead of it to unwind the DNA, and, to, and then you have the other enzymes like the single strand binding proteins that keep it from rejoining, the primase enzymes, the DNA polymerase making copies on leading and lagging strands, ligase joining the fragments together, and so on. So DNA polymerase works very, very rapidly because you have to copy a lot of bases every time a cell divides. It can copy a thousand bases a second. It's the main copying DNA builder. DNA primase, or polymerase one, excuse me, only copies 20 bases per second. It's for editing, repair, and primer removal. So Polymerase 1 was discovered by Arthur Kornberg and Polymerase 3 by Thomas Kornberg. So if you copy a thousand letters a second, you can imagine you might make a lot of mistakes. And DNA polymerase does make some mistakes. So DNA polymerase 1 then comes back and proofreads and corrects the typos. Cuts out the there's enzymes that are called endonucleases that will cut out the, the mismatched spaces. Polymerase 1 will then come in and replace those mismatched spaces with the correct ones, and ligase will join the, the pieces together to give us a complete DNA strand. So it reduces the error rate in copying DNA from 1 in 10,000 to 1 in 100 million bases. So there's very few errors that get through this process. So the process is both fast, but it's also accurate. E. coli has one chromosome. 
takes about an hour to copy its 5 million base pairs to divide and form two identical daughter cells. Human cells copy its 6 billion bases divide and daughter cells in a few hours. So if you think about in the human cell, air rate about one air in 100 million bases, 30 airs per cell cycle. That's a lot. So, but again, we got the proof. So this is just showing a picture of a DNA molecule in the process of being copied. And it's got multiple uh, replication bubbles where DNA is being actively copied. And you can see the photomicrograph on the left and the drawing on the right to illustrate those different things.